Greenies everyone, my name is Altarion and welcome my friends for my most beloved and dear followers who have watched my videos up until now. As you can see guys, I've got a new room behind me. I have moved and I'm still in the progress of fine tuning this room to have a better acoustic so I'm having a little bit of trouble with the echo. But as you can see I've got these black isolation things maybe i'm missing like a, a closet behind me or something i'll probably fix that in the future need to go shopping but anyways for this episode we're going to play citizen sleepers or sleeper we are going to be in space guys we are a worker who is sick and done with everything and he tries to escape into a desolate distant space station trying to find a new life it will be decision making game, indie of course, with a lot of text base. Um, but this is supposed to be a very beautiful story, guys. Uh, there probably are multiple endings. Let's see which one we will get. Let's start a new game. And as always, most fun stops. We're going to restart again because I've tried a little bit. We've got classes, guys, like you know, the classic, the rogue or the ranger. We've got the. Um, uh, the warrior and we've got the mage probably the, this one is probably the warrior the the operator should be then the the mage class and this one seems like the i don't know the rogue type stuff or maybe differently anyways let's see going from left the mechanist the mechanist repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction Sleepers assigned to the machinist work are usually dil diligent careful and structured people Perk, efficient extractor, chances to gain random scrap items on engineering actions. Skills, we've got the engineering, plus one, work with machines and physical tools, interface, work with digital interfaces, endure strength or strength of will, intuit is approach problem with awareness, and engage, approach problem head on. An operator. An operator works with drones and high-precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleeper designed to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. Okay, he has a lot of interface, but minus one with endurance. This one should be definitely the mage. Extractors work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleeper assigned to uh, extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient and have a high level of endurance. Yeah, I previously wanted to test with this one because I like the the strength of will kind of thing and you know the approach problem and he has sunbathe. Dice action allows energy to recover. What was this one? Chance to gain cryo, cryo or coins on interface action. Oh, well, let's try the mechanist. I think that's cool as well. Uh, what can we do? Diligent, careful, modified, automated systems, industrial. Yeah or mm, let's try to do the operator seems cool as well let's see what we'll get the first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect the delay between thinking and feeling between wanting to act and acting minor almost imperceptible imper Imperceptible, imperceptible, almost imperceptible, but always present. It is at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Think of the body. A leap into a cold lake on a hot day. The sting of blood welling from a fresh wound, the friction of a fingertip. All of a sudden the memories are closer than you thought, blurring as you approach until you can't tell one from another. The cold slips in behind and around you and the sensation fade out of reach. Perhaps you should be thankful for the dulled nature of this new body, given your current circumstances. The walls of the containers feel immediately present, cold hard at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia comes next, and repeat a little of your central retreat, a little of your central nervous system. It isn't painful, but like you used to know pain at least. In emergency, 
Mode pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent th throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Remember the plan. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. And once you got the itch to get out, by any means possible, it was either that plan, or something much, much worse. It was at least simple, collapse the shaft, drift away in the chaos, slip into cargo position, processing, seal yourself into containers, and then just hope the freighter left before you were missed. Some were lost in the shaft. Often, others never found the meeting point. Only a few made it to the container, but the freighter, as far as you know, left. Feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reach your destination. That's all there is now. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You're duly aware of the damage of your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but even then your body has shut many of its systems down to protect you. You may have spent much time, much of that time asleep knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibly begin. You feel the weight of that impossibility begin to gather. It is time to sleep again. To nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Time passes and the cold creeps further in. Feel some warmth. Not true warmth, but indication of its presence. Your joints release when they rigor. Sound too everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks your hearing to protect its sensors. The light, white as cold, then softer and softer until a haze of dirty yellow, a figure appears. You are out. Welcome to the space station, guys. Welcome, welcome. I should probably... There we go. So we are at a circular space station. Let's talk to Dragos. It has been a few hours since Draga spilled you from the container. You sit, huddled in a corner of the scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a Myler blanket. I don't know what Myler is, got to google that up. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. Mm. Dragas looks kinda... Cool. Continue. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of chips. Some corroded beyond recognition, others still carrying glassy wound along their edges, where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with foggy eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you all toad yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. No frames must have better preservatives than Subvac Zero, you know? Seems more than a few of you frozen solid to hill plates or inside out of locks in my time. Oh, they weren't so lucky. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. His headset with its glinting eyes, the mark of a drone operator. Ooh, we are buddies, I'm also a drone operator. On this shoulder, one of his on his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches. It's irising eye locking you with an unflinching stare, the little one. Last living sleeper. Lost. <clears throat> Last living sleeper came through this yard was a while ago. That didn't last that long. You struggle to read his expression beyond the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he's just figuring out what to do with you. Well, what happened to them? Stay silent. I plan to survive. I, yes, we are definitely planning to survive. You aren't sure if he hears you. No, I won't ask what led you to do it. Sell yourself to a corporation. And I suppose you know you can't go back. Your old body, that's theirs now. Shame. And you are just, you know, like you're just you're just their software. You know, a rogue emulation, illegally possessing corporate property, that's what you are. You nod along. You remember biometrically singing the for signing the form. 
the cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells, the promise of a life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar, familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are no longer that person, you are an offshoot, a copy. What you know now... Oh. What you won't know is what's ahead. And that's at least one... What? At least? At least the last one didn't. What you won't know is what's ahead of you. Well, at least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it, but you know, the body of yours? You know, that shit's falling apart. It's the same for every sleeper out there. S and R wants to protect the property and, uh, you know, if they can... If they can't keep a hold of you, well then no one can. You remember that too, or at least rumors from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence. A built in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them, and your body begins to shut down. Separate from your emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you still have? You know, but for now, sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Trigger's glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the art. The eye is the best place you could be right now, you know? The eye? No, oh, the station. Yeah, you'll see soon enough. Look, I've got things to get, uh, to get, uh, to be getting on with. There's an old freighter container I've been using as storage in the stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrub these days, so you're welcome to it. Something wells up inside of you. An, an, an emotion. Fatigue. You shakingly get to your feet, and you nod. Alright, alright. You head up there, you look like you need some rest, you know. And with that, Drago st stalks back into the wrecks. His drone already converging on a rusting hulk, plasma flashing, silhouetting this spindly figure as he returns to work. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station and perform actions. At the end of each cycle you need to head to your current home and rest. Resting will move time forward on the station, head to the empty container location and rest. And the cycle now. Okay, 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 we will rest. Is that my... Is that my home? Empty container? We came from the container and we will end in a container. I think that's a good life cycle. You wake, curled up in the corner of the container, and begin slowly assembling the world around you. After all this time, you still find this body, the one you wake up in now, strange and disjointed. Its messages readable but somehow wrong. You sit up, pulling the miler blanket close against the cold. Here you are on this ruined station, millions and millions of miles away from anyone you know. Are you still in the system? Did any of the others make it out? It is impossible to know. After all this, what matters? Well, what matters? Escape, answering, or uh, getting answers, or building a life? Well, assume, since you made such a huge escape, and we risking our life for it. I mean, if we wanted to just, you know, escape, we could have escaped somewhere else. But, you know, building a life, that's what it's all about. To be just more than a, a, a machine to work with. Maybe you did get lucky, finding yourself here. Maybe here, on the edge of everything, there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragus has left a few comforts in the container, a miler blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water and a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the power stud of the co of the stove. You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachet smell like damp wood and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images of your restless sleep come back to you. A ring, like station, but skeletal and ghostly, a web of threads pulling at your skin. A constellation of bright polygonal shapes, like angular suns burning into your mind. Wow, English is sometimes very difficult, guys. I'm doing my best. There is something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you finish drinking that they begin to fade. 
You tidy away the stove as best as you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. So, we have one is conditions, that's the top floor. Your condition presents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle, but you can also be damaged by violence, injury, lack of food. If your condition bar empties, you will suffer breakdown. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. It sounds like an amazing day. Action dices. At the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. I know that system and I love it. The number of dices rolled is based on your current condition. The worse your condition, the fewer the dices. Okay, so I guess these things give me... You know, there's a split line here, so I think I'm one condition above those three, so I get a fourth one. So we need to fill up until here. Good. Once you have used your dices, you cannot take them any further actions and you must rest to recover them and the third line is the energy you also need to eat to survive this is represented by your energy bar you can refill your energy bar by eating but first you'll have to find somewhere to get food and currency to buy it your energy depletes by two segments each cycle oh my god if so it uh, means one two we can technically speaking i don't know how much food refills but we can technically speaking fill up we can go two days without food yeah your energy depletes if it becomes empty you will be starving well that's 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 bad that's bad well as soon we leave dragus is dragus is stood in the corridor when you close up the container he's still wearing his headset and in the harsh light of the corridor you realize it is implanted a drone sits on the shoulder it's cachet of sensor eyes, rapidly irising. How you feeling? I'm not good. The drone chirps. Dragos nods. You notice that beneath the operator rigs, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but you know it'll keep you safe. So, I'm not going to chit chat too long. You well enough to work? Uh, yeah, sh sure. All right then. At the go at the yard, it's simple stuff, you know. We hack these old hills down, you know. We sell them off for the shipyard or the bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally we pull out some tech, but um, sometimes with a bit more value. But most of them, you know, just scrap. You know, it's uh, hard to find good hands, but I figure as a sleeper, you know, you'll you'll be used to the manual label. And obviously, I'll slip you a few chips of commission based on uh, what you turn up. Chits. Oh, these. These are chits. He pulls out a handful of small metal bars. Air wallet cryo. Isolated from the market. It's what we used to trade out here. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In, a, in my opinion, you'd be just best suited moving on as quick as you can. You know, and sleepers, well. But the thing is, the way that you are. Uh, the way. But the thing. But the. But the thing, but the thing being, the way that they are now, for me at the yard, I uh, could use help. Well, are you the one that smuggled me in? So yeah, why not? Okay. Look, um, just come down to the yard when uh, when you're feeling fresh. Okay, there's plenty to do. Will do. All right. See you later. He nods distinctly and turns and walks away. The drone hopping along ahead of him. Looks like it's time to get to work. This is the Dragos Yard. Let's go down there. So. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. To perform an action, click and drag. So we've got dices. We drag them to these, to these holes and we can do some cool actions. Action rewards you would clock progress, energy conditions and items. Here are three types. The yellow are the are the actions goes better than expected. Neutral actions succeed. Negative action failed. These dices have a lot of extra chances with negative chances for those. Okay. Those are repeatable actions. I get that. Number two is the risk. Either safe, risky. Or dangerous safe no loss of condition risky negative outcome means cryo and energy loss 
danger is negative outcome means condition loss. Neutral means cryo and energy. Oh my god. Three are the skills that's here. Engineering and enduring. The skill that takes the action required. Either engineering, interface, endure into it or engage. Then we have modifiers. This is added to the action dice when slotted and improves the value. Okay, cool. Okay, so we can do some hull at this session. This section. Die section, hull die section. Even the rustiest hull can hide valuable components and materials. Extracting them means cutting carefully and skillfully. This asks for engineer. Manual salvage. It's going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the towers of salvage, but you are no stranger to hard labor, but endure. And I think we were not that strong as being in a. Um, mage <laughs> it's not a mage but uh, i forgot the name what are we what are we anyways we have a depth called in dragus is tied up in something ugly and if he misses a payment or two things could get nasty okay back in business every salvager knows that they are always just one look away hole since this one gives us minus one on our thingy let's just go with a fill this thingy you know start the action We've got back in oh. Clocks are displayed below the action that filled that fill them, and they track your action and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. Some clocks, such as the one tracking Draga's depth, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle. Aha! So we've got each day, and each cycle clock will be displayed on the icon. Okay, 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 okay. I get it. I get it. So this gave us two. And this is nothing. So we can do how many actions? Can we, oh, we can do quite a lot of actions per day. What drives the navigation? The citizen sleeper. In citizen sleeper, you will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself and the world. Drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives, depending on which part you wish to take. You can track drives, and any tracked driver will place a yellow marker on location that will. Okay, so that's like a quest. I get it. What is this? You are now free to explore Erlin's eye and make a life for yourself. Well, thank you. Try tracking drive to survive. Look for food to keep your energy and recover conditions. Fill the clocks and cycles. I get it. I get it. But now we have gained more cryo, more back in business. So I've done two today. And by if I end the cycle, this is only going to fill up with, with two or one. One or two probably something like that since this one went with two this one probably also went with two so we have more we have much more time than needed just to fill per two tasks each day so we can go back out i think yeah there we go character options we are uh what are we i forgot the name of what we are anyways we're a cool operator Interface. Work with digital interfaces. Chance to gain cryo on interface actions. Here we've got minus one on endurance. That's not that good. That's not that good. Find a doctor. Survive. You need access to corporate pharmaceuticals. Otherwise, the escape... Oh, yeah, of course. We need indeed something. What is this? That's a dock. Can we move a little bit up? There we go. What is this? Old dock terminal. What is this? Merchants will run the gauntlet of the helium system are now rare, but those will uh will okay so probably merchants will come here. That's also a dock. It takes several cycles to reach the steward belt and return loaded with scrap. Uh, okay, I get it. So those are the docks for the howlers. Uh-huh, this is the central marketplace or whatever. What can we do? Steel dock plants. What? Heaven and security have to have plants. Heaven age security. I don't know that word. Stealing them would be the fastest way to get to know this place and the most dangerous one. Oh no. No, 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 no. But does this give us 100%? Ah, no. Ah, do, 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 do. Let's not do that. Let's do not do that. Explore the rotunda. The rotunda of the old dock is filled with passageway and concourses leading to all kinds of dock. Okay, let's explore. We need to find a dock. Havenage watch list. Havenage run the Havenage run the rotunda. Okay, so Havenage is a clan or whatever people of folk or whatever mafia, and their security watches the docks. Better to avoid attracting their attention. Okay, 
Okay, the dog watcher. Getting to know the rotunda doesn't mean new places to visit. It doesn't just mean new places to visit. It means keeping your eye on new arrivals too. Okay, start action. 50% of a positive and 50% of a neutral. Dog watcher. Okay. We've done something. We have done something. What did we do? Did we watch something? We watched something. What is this? An overlook bar. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Get a drink. You ensure you are unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but this fungal drink fermented along in the green way seems like a good taste. Overlook regular? The overlook isn't exactly a restaurant, meaning the only way you'll gain trust around here is with the Okay, so I need to drink, okay? So you, you need to build up relationships. Okay, boy ration. Uh -huh. Tala keeps some expired Solheim rations behind the bar for those very spaces who ask why the overlook doesn't serve food. Then, is that a lot? Do we need food? Do we need food? I don't know if we need food. I'm not so sure, but we need to buy something, don't we? Um, how do we... We still need to get some information out of something. We need to find a dock. Is, is, is there something else? There is more bright markets. Uh -huh, what is this? Ask for direction. Explore the market by ourselves. What is this? 50% chance for neutral, 50% chance for a negative. That seems dangerous. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And this is one is risky. Uh oh. The smell sounds. Exp the smell, the sounds, the bustling activity of the bright market makes it a dizzily, dizzying place to wander, but an enticing one too. The bright market is the busiest of the eye. The bright market is the busiest part of the eye's lower rim. You can find anything. You know? Let's just ask for directions. And even if it's dangerous, that's on me. Where is the dock? Oh no, condition cryo. Oh no, oh no, we fucked up. Oh damn. Well, no dock. No dock available. That's bad. That's bad. And we've got the lower gate. Ooh. We need to pay 60 cryo to get to the upper deck. God damn it. So we lost cash, we lost everything. We screwed up a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Drago's graveyard. What is the shipyard? What are we going to do with the shipyard? Assist a shipbuilder. You don't have connections, but you do have skills. If you can get a shipbuilder to notice them, you might be in. Okay. Whole materials. Uh, those are none of these jobs. Something that I can do. I guess we will end the cycle because we have a little bit messed up there. Damn. I, didn't th I don't think it even was worth it to risk so Oh, damn, we're going to starve. This time, you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring surrounds you. For a moment, you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then, the connections begin to establish themselves. Threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into millions of disturbed nodes they, they connect to. You see the station, no, you feel the station like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Touch it. You find a point on the station and you connect to it, pulls through it. Follow loops and paths under and around it. You touch the point and you have... You touch more points than you have fingers. And then you try in a moment of impulsation to connect them. The flow passes through you rapidly, so rapidly that you feel yourself being carried with it. Splitting and separating, eddying and gathering as you do things occur to you. Things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice a tuggling feeling pulling at you insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once, you look down. All of a sudden everything shuts off. You come back trembling into your, this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes open now in the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second and you feel it waiting there. The station splayed out across your mind, a storm of connective notes, wanting or waiting to be explored, and then it's gone. 
Wow. I'm starving. We're not doing good. We're not going good. Hello. Hello. Give me some food, please. Start action. Thank the gods. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we still need to find a doctor. Please. Uh, need to explore the market. Let's go. We need to find a doctor. Okay. Okay, we've got local knowledge. We've got some local knowledge. Do we find a doctor? We found a doctor. And we found some street food vendor. Let's go to the doctor first. Because I don't know how long we will live. Next! Comes the call from the enforcer at the door. You shuffle down the flickering hallway. Towards the open apartment door. Keep your head down. Your shoulders high in the queue. Trying not to bring attention to yourself. You were thankful for the tip-off that the doctor was operating out of the place, but now you are here and you aren't so sure. The gang enforcer on the door, the flickering light strips, the decaying hair block, they all have made the long queue a test of your nerve. But your options are few and without a supply of stabilizers, this body, your body. The suppressor. You suppress a shiver and shuffle towards the front of the queue. You try to find something to distract yourself. Let's look at the enforcer, shall we? Just like a quick peek. The enforcer is looking down the corridor and you dare to glance at him. His purpose is unmistakable. He is there to intimidate, to threaten and if necessary carry through those threats. His broad shoulders are framed with a metal exoskeleton, a couple of mirror-like implants sit below his eyes like mercury teardrops. Subsidiary senses, input or aesthetic markers, you aren't sure. You also aren't familiar with this geometric blade-like tattoo on his arm, but you make note of it. You avert your eyes when he looks back at the queue. After a few moments, the figure pushes through the doorway and you catch a distant voice. Send the next one in, Toshiro! The enforcer jerks his head and you slip inside, passing through the dark entryway and pushing through the plastic sheets on the far door. The room beyond is bathed with warm light. A floor to ceiling transplant panel gives a full view of the bright market sealed roof and the buzzing traffic above. And for a moment you are transfixed by this emotion. Come sit, uh, comes a sharp voice and you see a silhouette figure turned away, replacing the plastic sheet over the frame of a simple folding bed. You make your way across the room. Sabine. Okay. The figure turns and as they do, you see an expression of confusion flash across their features. They open their mouth as if to speak. They blink and then quickly regain their composure. Please, sit down. They gesture to the bed and then turn to an open case of tools on a table. You sit. Sabine turns a compact diagnostic scanner out of some kind in their hand, they hold it into their eye, remain still please. Their tone is clipped and businesslike. You stare ahead, still dazed from their expression when you entered. Fear, recognition, sadness, unmistakably etched across their faces. How long have you been on the station, if I might ask? A uh, few cycles. Hmm. It's good that you came to me. I'm going to start my assuming you don't know anything. You take your arm up and roll up your sleeve, inspecting your synthetic skin. Your body is dying. They say it without ceremony, without drama, but not without empathy. SNR doesn't like to see its property technology let's set loose. You know, to prevent bodies like yours, frames as they call them, from being stolen, repurposed or in your case escaping. They built in a purpose, so-called plant obsolescences. Frames decay rapidly when not regularly injected with stabilizers, one which SNR remains the sole producer of. Sounds familiar? Yes, I'm not going to ask questions how you know it or whatever, I'm just going to say yeah. Good, that may help. They swap to your other arm, returning, running some thin metal device over your skin. You feel your forearm tremble. I'm sorry, Sabine says, and you are unsure if they meant for the cold touch of the metal or everything else. 
Emulations like you, sleepers, as most people know, aren't classified as people in any of the surrogate systems. You have no rights, no status, and SNR has no reason to release stabilizers into the market. I know little of this. I know little of this is useful for you. I know little of this is of use to you. Return away, disassembling the metal instrument and cleaning it. Silence fills the room as Sabine works, and then the silent gives away the tension. You stare at her back, willing them to say something, just, just anything. I may be able to help you, they sigh, and you see the darkness under their eyes, heard the fatigue in her voice, they gesture to the door. You saw Tosher outside? He works for my benefactor, Yatagan. They are influential in the low end. They give me this space to work, to you know, run the door and to take profits. At the same time, I have to fix up their enforcers, tend to their implants, sew up their wounds. But Yatan has connections, smugglers from the Stower Pelt, mercenaries working from corporations on Ember. If they can source the stabilizers, maybe you'll have a better chance. Sabine sets down their slate, their notes complete. This? This is dangerous. And it'll be expensive, but I think I can do it. Why am I going to ask questions why help me? I'm just going to say thank you and roll with it for now. Let's just see if it works first. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know when I have a lead. You know, then leave. Sabine's still staring out and moving. When you reach the lower level of the market, you look back up through the panels on the roof to see if you can see their face, but the room looks dark against the light of the market. You duck your head and walk off into the crowd. Okay. We are... We have to wait, don't we? Sabine thinks they can source some stabilizers through Yatagan, but it is going to take a few cycles. Okay, we still have two very bad things left. What is this guy? Emphasis is buzzy, his broad face uplit by the makeshift gas burner in front of him. With precise, delicate movements, he lays thick chunks of marinade fungus into a dented wok, his other hands idly tossing a metal bowl of sal sliced vegetables in some red flecked dressing. Smell is incredible. Emphasis, he looks badass. That's a badass cook, I love that dude. You watch as he fulfills a set of orders, heaping the fungus with a bright salad and depositing it in a plastic trays. A stack of chits rattles on his apron pocket as customers file past the burners, handing over payment. Yeah, approach, we've got, a, we've got five, hopefully it's not too expensive. You join the queue. It's mostly made of off-duty salvagers, back suit unzipped and rolled down to expose stained vest, grubby mods, a lattice of scores and tattoos. They discuss the best food on the eye, the best drinks, comparing notes on bright market dives. Their words cut through a heavy spacer slang. Eventually it's your turn and you shuffle to the pond. Front. Emphasis speaks in a deep, even tone, without even looking up. First try is free. Oh, thank you. Smell is almost unbearably strong as he cooks the earthiness of the fungus laced with something so spicy the smoke makes your eyes water. The heat from the burner is like bonfire and your skin hardens at its glare. I know you, you're sleepers. A hard life, a lot of stories. I know. He glances up from beneath his cap with a piercing eye. Yo, oh, he's badass, I like him, emphasis. You begin to tell him about your journey to the eye, and he nods as he cooks, his eye never leaving his work. You tell him of the confusion, the pain, but also the sense of possibility in its sudden arrival. You tell him of the cold and dark of the container, and the endless cycles spent with it, within it. Now it seems you tell him like some dreams that you once had, but can never forget. You can tell him that the eye excites you and it scares you at the same time and you are unsure whether where to walk, where to look, what to do, eventually you tail off, running out of words. 
He places a plastic tray of steaming fungus in your hand. Next time, we can talk some more. He smiles. But next time, you pay. Continue. He slams a heavy hand against the button on the burner side and it shuts off. The roar of a flame and its impressive heat fades. Next time then, sleeper. He waves you away and begins to oil the walk. Before you turn back to the alley, you notice the, ge the geometric pattern of circular scars across his forearm. Oh, those things. Each surrounded with a constellation of glinting pin marks. Oh, interesting. You walk away, and as you do, you take a bite of the rich, spicy, delicacy sweet fungus. Your taste sensor light up like a fusion reactor. You will be back. We are full. Repay Dragus. Get to know Emphasis. Emphis. Emphis loves things, stories and food. Maybe if you supply him with both, you can hear his story. Okay. So we need to pay him. She is still looking. That's a bright market. We still got to go to work. Dragus. Doc. Let's go. See what we can do. Can we do this? Ah, uh, neutral negative, but that's so bad. Okay, it only filled up with one. I don't think I want to use those guys. Is there anything we can do that is less risky? But it's always risky, no? I think it's always risky. It's never not risky. It's always... Yeah, DM. Can we do something? No, we need to pay. His food cost 15. Damn, that's... That's a lot. That's a lot. That's also risky. Oh my god, that's just... Oh, I'm not... Do I want to do that even? What are the negative conditions that can happen at the yard? What are those? No, no, no. Let's go. Let's go here. It's risky. But this one is safe. But this one is this one is risky. This one is safe. But what are we going to lose? Are we gonna? Ah, no, uh, uh, no, I don't want to risk it. Let's go sleep. I just, I just got the feeling that if we do some stupid decisions, try decisions without good dices, I think we will be screwed. Again, the skeletal ring of the station fills your mind. It sparks with glittering light, like stars reflected in a winter lake. It's clearer, crisper than before. The threads still pull, but you remain in place, flickering in flow. Between the threads you see bright shapes, caches of shimmering light beneath, transparent crystal forms. You follow the path of a thread across the ring, through these forms then leaping off into the void. You begin to understand now, these are notes and connections, a map of information, of communication. There are so many layers, so many loops that it seems almost impossible to parse. But you begin to try, focus on the... Notes. The notes are glossy, bright, but in all of this flow, the only solid and fixing points. You approach one, a pyramid, or a triangle. Dimensions are difficult here. And lean close to it. Inside, shifting layers conceal a tangle of threads, a meeting point of exchange. But before you can glimpse inside, the glass clouds and hardens, cutting you off. Threads and notes, passages and puzzle boxes, one leads to another. There is so much here, so many answers, so many questions. All you need to do is follow the paths and open boxes. You look out across the ghost landscape of exchange and see an opportunity. But then you insist, tugging again, pulling at you. You look down again and see two lines, two threads, pulling in different directions, as if they were tied around you. Uh, let's take the first one. The first thread leads out, away from the station, into an icky black. Someone out there is tracking you, hunting you. Oh shit. Following the threads to you, they are on a ship, and the ship is approaching ever closer with each cycle. Oh no, we're gonna die. It's not just survival, we're getting hunted as well. The second thread leads in. Pulling deep into the station, your gaze follows, and it is time you see something, a sphere, shimmering above a strange angular body. A pulse shoots out from it, passing over you like a torch beam, testing you, testing you. You open your eyes, time is short. 
Yeah, we've got good ones. We've got good dices, guys. We've got good dices. Tutorial. The cloud. Something has changed inside. You can now access the data cloud of the AI, a network of decaying protocols, a data caches. Uh, while you are, you can use dices and items to access systems and extract data. But be careful. These networks are old and strange. Click on the AI. Continue. Okay. Ah, oh, nice. Keynote 1. What do we do with it? The data here is part of... Data actions allow you to extract data from the network of the AI. They work like dice actions, but in order to unlock them, you must use your dice to the one displayed on the right action. Okay, nice. So now we can use those, those useless dices. If you have a plus one plus two modifier on the interface skill, you will begin, you will be given more dice possible. You will be given more possible dice to match. You can use any dice to match the dice displayed. Okay, nice. So we can use a 2 or a 3. That's actually freaking amazing. The data here is part of a cache. It took the way and collapsed. Who did this and for what purpose? Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Close the eye. But first, Dragus, let's go. No, first. Let's see how the doctor is moving. How fast is the, her progress? Okay. 2. Oh no, 1, 2, 3. We need to wait 3 days. Hopefully we will survive 3 days. Hopefully we will. But let's first go help Dragus a little bit, you know? We have a risky task, but 50% positive, 50% neutral. Well, let's... What is this one? And that, that gives me minus one, doesn't it? Yeah, that's negative effect. Don't want that. Let's go with this one. A little bit of pull that section. Back in business. That good. That good. That's negative. That's not good, but let's do it anyway. Good. Very good. A lot of uh, a lot of everything. I'm happy with this. We've got 35 food. That's good. I wanted to make some buddy buddy with emphasis. I like that bruv. Yeah. I'm gonna give you some of this. Start action. Give me some of that good fungus, man. Give me food. There we go. There we go. Okay, we still need to fill. We need to eat at least four times yet. Now. Now. What are these? Solheim gates. Oh, we need the Solheim chip for this one. Um, heaven, Heavenage gate. We need a chip for that as well. Wow, this is more difficult than I initially thought. Here we can use one or a three. Can we use a three? Yeah, we can. That's good, I think. Uh, can we do what is this one? A 1 or a 3. This is a 2 or a 3. I think we can keep on using the 3 because we have plus bonuses. Well, you know, I don't read. Uh huh. The notes open the remains of a broken corporate countermeasure. Broken log. Broken long ago by hackers. Ah, oh, so many choices. What was this one? This is a keynote. The data here is part of a cache. Tucked away during the collapse. Who did this for a purpose? I want this one. We can, yeah? Com bypass. We got plus 5 cryo. Can we now extract it? Oh yeah, that, that's our passive skill. We get cryo for every time we do that. Nice. We have gotten an encrypted key. Data. A stream of passcodes. Able to unlock the station aging mega locks. What? Is it this thing? No, that's just mega locks. What the freaking hell is a mega lock? What is this? That's a Yatang agent. <gasps> Some gang of forcer implants are chipping out com signals. Time to see what they're talking about. Ooh, but I'm not going to go there before I even have any supplies. Okay, I still don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do with this one. This seems like very, very dangerous. But I think we are gonna go and sleep now. Haunted. Yeah, someone out there is tracking you, waiting for your trail trial. Uh, can we save, by the way? How, do, uh, how does save work? No, save doesn't work. So I guess we'll just go first sleep. And then we will finish up the very first episode. I think we're still alive. We're still doing good.
Okay. No story this time. Good dices. That's a good beginning. Oh no. We have. As you close up, a voice echoes down the corridor towards you. Sleeper, wait up. Turn around. Fang is coming down the corridor towards you. A wonky grin on his broad face. Hey, Clara. Cled? Hey, Cled, I caught you! Do I know you, Fang? Ha, <laughs> you do know. He puts a hand on your arm. I've seen you hanging around, just want to chat. You staying in that thing? You know, rough. Ah, it can be hard to get a start on the eye. He looks away down the passage. Well, what was it old Erlen said? The eye opens for us all? Nice idea, but well, not always very practical. Well, we do our best, but uh, it isn't easy. Who is Erlin? Who is we? You pass together into the main walkway. No one has uh, told you about Erlin. You no, know, he's he's the founder of this place. Yeah, that's why he, it bears his name. Ah, okay. Heaven it should organize some seminars or something. Not really my department, though. Ah, with systems. Oh, what is systems? Everything on the eye runs on. This place is a rune, but systems keep it spinning somehow. You know, at least we try. It stops you in a quiet passage. Look, that's not what I'm here to discuss. Uh, I saw you around and you know, well, I'm a little up, uh, little about you sleepers. Um, I have a little proposition for you. He glances around, but uh, it's not the best place for it. I have an office just across the way. Give me a cycle or two to prepare. Then, when you are settled, stop by. In truth, I actually need you. <laughs> uh, if what I say, if what, if what they say is true about your sleepers, well, there's work to be done. He pats you on the back. His voice bright and his dark look suddenly gone. Stay clean, sleeper. He walks off in a passage, raising a hand in farewell. Okay, that's cool. Everybody needs us. Everybody loves us. Give me a couple of seconds, guys. And next episode, we will continue. I'm very excited. Very cool. Very much love it. Cool story. So much decisions. Who do we help? Do we even have time to help everyone? And then we have the dices, which we need the food. We need to talk. We need to explore. And then we have to do those spionage data salvaging. Anyways, very cool. Very awesome, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did, guys. If you did, drop a comment down below. Leave a like and please subscribe to the channel. Help us grow to unseen heights, guys. And I will see you in the second episode of Citizen Sleepers. Have a good day, everyone.